and Illusion Magic is one of my favorite schools of magic in all of 5e. Okay, I'm not I'm not doing this. I was gonna make a joke about not being able to grow facial hair in illusions, but that is way, way too itchy. <laughs> Starting off, we have the second level spell, Mirror Image. This spell is a really unique defensive buff that a lot of people skim over simply because it doesn't have a damage dice attached to it. This spell costs an action and makes three indistinguishable illusory duplicates of the caster. Each of those illusory duplicates lasts an entire minute or until they're destroyed. Every time a creature tries to attack someone who has Mirror Images up, the caster of Mirror Images gets to roll a d20 to determine if that strike actually hits them or one of their Mirror Images. Depending upon how many duplicates there are determines the difficulty and the percent chance that the caster actually gets hit. For example, if you have all three illusory duplicates available to you and someone tries to make an attack against you, you roll a d20 and if you roll a 6 or higher, or a 25% chance, that strike will instead hit one of your mirror images, destroying it. If you only have two mirror images beside you, that is changed to an 8 or higher, which is a 33% chance, and if you only have one, it's changed to an 11 or higher, roughly equating to a 50% chance it's going to hit your duplicate. Each time an illusion is attacked, it is thereby destroyed and adjusts the following difficulty of the next attack thereafter. All of this happens prior to the creature actually getting to roll for their attack. So it is possible that if a creature goes and attacks an illusion instead of yourself, they may still miss the illusion. So with all of that, consider this. Starting off, there's only a 25% to 50% chance that you will be struck with the attack. So right off the bat, your chances of being hit are at least cut in half. That's not even including AC calculations for the chance for the attacks to actually hit you or a duplicate. The illusion's AC is a little bit lesser than yours, generally speaking, however, there is still a chance that it might miss, thereby increasing the amount of time you have this defensive buff. Now, before you say, but Lee, what's stopping them from just casting fireball on all of the illusions? Well, I'm glad you asked. Mirror Image specifically says that the illusions cannot be destroyed by anything other than an attack targeting it that hits. Meaning that if a d20 is not rolled to strike that target, the illusion will not be destroyed no matter what, aside from an effect like Dispel Magic. Unfortunately for you, if you do get Fireball, you will have to make that dex check and you will still have to take that damage regardless. However, much like you might imagine, the mirror image duplicates yourself. So while you might think you're the one looking like a toasted marshmallow, the illusory duplicates will also look like toasted marshmallows, so there is no way someone will actually know which target is the real target. In all honesty, mirror image is arguably one of the best defensive spells in all of the game against creature attacks, so be sure to take a look at the spell whenever you get the chance. Next up on our list we have the third level spell, Fear. You probably have a good idea what this spell does just based on the name, but allow me to elaborate a little bit. Fear creates a phantasmal image of the creature's worst fear. Each creature in a 30-foot cone of the caster must make a wisdom saving throw or drop what it's holding and become frightened of the target. However, this frightened condition is a little bit different as it acts more like a frightened plus, making it much more valuable than the standard frightened condition. Any creature frightened in this way must take their action to dash away from the source of their fear. This not only gives them the frightened condition, which is also incredibly powerful in its own right, but it forces the target to use their action to run away. While running away might not be ideal for you defeating them, it does turn the action economy in your favor, effectively giving you multiple turns before they get an attack. And considering this spell can technically affect multiple enemies at once, it can very quickly end an entire encounter given the right situations. Now you may be yelling at your screen saying, that sounds broken, how the heck is that an underrated spell? Well, that's because fear utilizes the frightened condition. There are a lot of enemies in 5th edition that are flat out immune to the frightened condition, making this spell useless against them. But assuming the enemies can be frightened, they don't get another save against the frightened condition until they break line of sight with the source of their fear. If you're fighting in something like a town with a lot of alleys, enemies could just run behind a building, break line of sight, get a free saving throw at the end of their turn, and that's that. But if you're fighting out in the open in some sort of plane or field or something like that, this spell becomes a lot more efficient. If a creature becomes feared from this spell and they don't break line of sight with you, they are flat out feared for the entire minute. And either way, as long as they become frightened from this spell, they have to at least spend one action to run away, which could definitely turn the tide of any battle, effectively giving your party two turns before they even get one. And that's fear. Moving on, we have a personal favorite spell of mine, and that would be the fifth level spell, Mislead. 
This is a unique little spell that effectively makes an illusory duplicate of the caster that's under your control for an hour. It has no range and you can use your action to move the duplicate up to twice your speed and act as you choose to. The really cool thing about this spell is that when you cast it, you actually become invisible and the duplicate appears where you were standing. And that's where the name mislead comes into play. While the spell is active, it effectively acts like a find familiar spell where you can see and hear through its senses. However, while doing so, you are blinded and deafened to your own senses. While not a spell one would frequently use, mislead is a great way to be in two places at once. Safely engage in generally unsafe activities, attend that awkward social middle school dance, or just simply stay in bed while your illusory duplicate goes off to your meetings. But let's not forget the combat usage of this spell. If a creature is focusing on you and you're looking for a way to distract the enemy, mislead is a great way to do just that. Cast mislead, run away from the enemy to make it seem like you are retreating, and then surprise attack with advantage from invisibility. While that might not be the most cost effective way of gaining advantage, that's not the main focus of mislead. This spell is meant to distract enemies, and that's pretty much it. If you're waiting on a monologuing enemy, simply cast mislead and send your illusory self charging at the enemy. They turn to face you and likely attack the illusion that's running towards them, only to miss and to be assaulted by your entire party in one fell swoop. So yeah, while not the most frequently utilized spell, mislead has a bunch of different use cases that I believe can make it worthwhile for a fit level spell. Next up on our list we have the 6th level spell, Mental Prison. This spell is one of the cooler flavored spells in the game, but it also deals a lot of damage. One creature you choose must make an intelligent saving throw. Regardless of that save, the target will take 5d10 psychic damage, but if they fail the save, they become restrained with an illusion of your creation. That illusion can take the form of whatever you choose that appears dangerous in some way. And the really cool thing about this is that if the creature moves out of the illusion, attacks the illusion, or even touches it in any way, they immediately take 10d10 psychic damage, making the total damage of this spell 15d10. Now, based on those numbers, this spell is pretty damn powerful, as you might have guessed. Dealing 15d10 is a big chunk of damage, but what makes this spell even more effective is the fact that it uses intelligent saving throws, which is statistically the weakest save of all creatures in 5th edition. Now, you may be asking yourself why this spell is underrated, and it's effectively the same reason that I put fear on this list. If a creature is immune to being charmed, then this spell simply fails and only deals 5d10 damage. And being immune to charm isn't exactly rare in 5th edition, which is a real shame. But again, throw on the fact that they're restrained, as well as take 15d10 damage, there's a lot of upside to this spell. So, if you do come across a creature that is not immune to charm, then there is a pretty good chance that they will fail with their save and take a boatload of psychic damage alongside it. With everything considered, it's definitely worth at least a look whenever you get access to a 6th level spell slot. And finally, the last spell we have for today is going to be the second level spell, Silence. This spell creates a 20 foot radius sphere where no sound can be created or passed through at any point of your choice within 120 feet of the caster. Any creature within that area is immune to thunder damage and are deafened. Now, deafened isn't really that great of a condition in combat because all it does is make creatures auto fail ability checks using their hearing. But silence has another effect. Since the area has no sound, people cannot talk. And a small detail of that that newer players might not be aware of is that a lot of spells require verbal components, meaning that they need to speak in order to cast a spell. And to put that into perspective, there are roughly about 30 spells in all of 5th edition that do not require the ability to speak. Now, to put that into perspective, on D&D Beyond, there are currently 534 spells in 5th edition. This means that a creature with the silent spell only has access to roughly 30 spells of 534, which is about 5% of the entire list of spells in the game. And that is pretty crippling if you ask me. Now, creatures can move in and out of the area as they need to, so it's really up to you and your party to make sure that enemies don't move out of it. But assuming you can do that, Silence is the ultimate caster takedown spell. But that's five underrated spells in D&D 5e. If you liked the video, I have made others that you can check out. I've linked in the description below. Also, if you have any underrated spells, please leave a comment and let me know. I read every comment, almost always reply, and who knows, I might even feature your comment in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you on Friday.